once. Tilted? Weird. Now it's not tilted. What's up guys, it's Phil. Today we're doing another quick tip and I'm gonna teach you guys how to get the perfect finish on your dining room tables and other projects using polyurethane. So I've had this request a couple of times. Um, I'm not afraid to give it away because I learned it once again right here on YouTube. I took a couple of different people's videos, tips and tricks, uh, some articles that I read in Woodworking Magazine, and combined all of that into a very simple process uh, that I do every day on just about every project that I make. It's really, really awesome for dining tables, um, and there's a couple of things here that I'm going to show you guys, so there's a lot of tips and tricks. This thing's really tip heavy, uh, but I'm going to try to keep it short because I know my last quick tip was really long. So, let's get started. So for starters, the first thing you need is polyurethane. Now, um, I use an oil-based polyurethane, and I always, always, always pre-mix the polyurethane so that it is a little easier to manage. So I'm going to show you guys how to make that real quick. Um, all the supplies you're going to need is a little bit of tape and a permanent marker. You're going to need a gallon of polyurethane and then an empty gallon paint bucket. Now those can be picked up at your big box store hardware stores or if you want to go support your local guys, go to one of your locally owned Aces or True Value where it's family owned, pick it up there. It might be a touch more expensive but you're actually supporting uh, some independent owners versus the big corporation, so that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, but get yourself a gallon of polyurethane, get yourself a gallon of mineral spirits, and get yourself an empty gallon container with a lid, a little bit of tape, a little bit of permanent marker, or a permanent marker, and something to stir everything with. Here's the extremely simple way to do this. So I have an empty can. Instead of buying a new one, I'm just using an old one that's been cleaned out a little bit. I've also got a brand spanking new can of mineral spirits and of polyurethane. Now one of the things that you might notice about both of these is I use a satin polyurethane. Um, it's usually, I don't know why, but it's usually cheaper. If you get gloss or satin, it's like 20, 30 bucks, but if you get matte, it's like 30 to $40. I'm not sure why the price difference. Uh, someone can explain that to me in the comments, that would be great. But Matte polyurethane would be best, but satin polyurethane works really, really well for stuff I'm going to show you towards the end of the video. So for now, get yourself a gallon of clear satin polyurethane. Um, I like hardwood floor polyurethanes. They have more stuff in them that, that makes them tougher, um, and that's going to benefit us in the future. So go ahead and pop your cans open. All right, look at that. That stuff is fresh, nice, clean. I love it. I want to stir this up, um, but it's going to make a mess if I do that. So, I'm going to pour some of it into here, okay? Get yourself a paper towel, and now I'm going to stir this up. I don't really know. Um, it just it mixes in. When you poured this out, there was nothing but glossy polyurethane in it. I don't know if you knew that or not. This contained all the talc in the bottom and the polyurethane, so stirring it up and then mixing them back and forth and stirring in between just gets a good consistent mix in both. So now I have half a gallon of satin polyurethane and half a gallon of satin polyurethane. Now I'm going to take my mineral spirits, and if you did your math right, three containers, two gallons. I should wind up with two gallons and an empty container here. Now to prevent it from spilling everywhere and, and spurting out, I'm going to keep the nozzle up at the top here and tilt it out this way so it gets a nice smooth pour without doing the glug 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 thing. Okay, so I'm about three quarters of the way full there. Do the same over here and boom goes the dynamite. Alright, so now I'm almost out of mineral spirits. With that, I'm going to lightly stir my new can, try not to get anything in the rim, and actually, once I've got it stirred up, I'm going to take my paper towel, 
and wipe out this edge and try and soak up as much of this polyurethane out of the rim as I can. Going all over, making a mess. I've got the edge cleaned up there. I'm gonna go ahead and reseal this the best I can because this is gonna go on the shelf. So that is nice and tight. And this is gonna go on the shelf in the other room. So now, I've got my other gallon of poly here. I'm gonna mix this up with these mineral spirits in it. Last thing before you are done, you are going to want to label these with your permanent marker. I always put pre-50-50. That way I know it's already done. And I'm gonna do that to both cans. Now here's the deal guys, the new gallon that you just purchased and just mixed, you want to clean that rim, seal that thing up, put it away because it's going to last a while and that's why we put so much mineral spirits in it. We're literally doing a 50-50 mix with mineral spirits. With the gallon you're planning on using, I would leave the lid off for an hour or so. Um, you want uh, some of these mineral spirits to begin evaporating. Um, because if not, when you go to put it on, it may not give you the results that you want. I like to let it sit for a little bit, so I tend to mix this up a day or two before I'm going to be doing uh, polyurethane on a tabletop because it's very, very thin. And if you wind up with too much mineral spirits, you don't really get the finish that you want. So when I just mixed it, I like to let it sit. That one's going to sit in the can for a while and age. It'll be fine because that's going to evaporate a little bit. This is going to evaporate a little bit while I leave it open and get around to doing other stuff around here. So. I'm going to clean up and we're going to go ahead and show you how to use this polyurethane to get the results that I always get. Now that you've got your polyurethane mixed, it's time to move on to how to actually apply it to the top. Now this is a process that I like to call filming. Um, again, I'm not the one who came up with that term, I learned it right here on YouTube. Uh, but instead of brushing on our polyurethane and leaving that thick plastic look when it's done, we're going to wipe on the coats and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. To do this, all you need is your tabletop, your polyurethane, a paper towel, and a glove. Now for this process, I like to use nitrile gloves because they don't react to the solvents that are in the polyurethane. I also like to use these little half-sized paper towels just because it makes for less waste of both the polyurethane and the towels themselves. So fold this in half, fold that in half, fold that in half. You're gonna quarter this thing down to a little size like that, squeeze your corner so it's nice and creased, and just dip it into your polyurethane. Now, with this polyurethane being so thin, if you want to, you can shake it up, let it sit for a little bit after that, uh, but you don't have to worry too much about the bubbles. That is a myth in polyurethane, is that you're never supposed to shake it up. It's not actually true, especially if you thin it, it really doesn't make a difference. It does actually kind of help to get the talc all throughout if you do shake it up, but you do want to let it sit just to get some of those micro bubbles out. And if you're a fan of not shaking it up, just stir it. I always stir it, but you know. So after you've stirred your polyurethane, you want to dip your cloth down into it and then bring it up. For your first coat, I probably wouldn't wring it out, but for subsequent coats, we're going to end up wringing it out. Now I always go through and make sure that all of my tops are sanded down to at least a 220 grit uh, and then I stain them. Between coats I like to use a 220 grit or a 400 grit sandpaper just to kind of smooth out any high spots, get rid of any bubbles, and then I go through with the tack cloth and make sure that I get rid of all the dust before putting on subsequent coats. But for now we're going to go ahead and put on that first coat. We're going to do this by very simply applying our polyurethane soaked paper towel, bring it to the edge, and just drag all the way across with the wood grain. Come back and do it again. Come back and do it again. <clears throat> if you feel the paper towel starting to get a little bit dry, you can flip it over. If you start to pull up some of your stain, that's okay. Uh, just make sure to flip the paper towel over or invert it to a nice clean side and continue going from there. Now you do want your first coat to be a little bit thicker, so go ahead and get yourself some more polyurethane. You can spread the towel open a little bit more if you want to, like I have here, but I highly recommend you use the smallest cloth that you can. And for the first coat, the reason we want it thicker, especially on oak like this, is we want to make sure that it's getting into all the cracks, crevices, and details if you have a really rustic farmhouse kind of table. If you've got a nice smooth surface to work with, uh, then that's going to go a lot farther. And if you've got a nice flat tabletop, you don't have a lot of defects and things like this that I purposely left in this tabletop. Now you're going to want to continue across the top from one side to the other and then make sure you get your wood grains done on the side. 
Go back and make sure that all the sides of your table don't have any runs or drips, and make sure your end grain has a good amount of polyurethane in it because you really want to seal those up really, really nice. After that, we move on to my next favorite step, which I call the wood grain dance. Now, once you thin your polyurethane, it starts to dry really fast, and on oak like this, I can see it starting to pool in the deeper grains, and it's already starting to dry in the more shallow grains. So, now we're gonna do the wood grain dance. The wood grain dance goes like this. You take your pad as flat as you can, set it on one board towards the end, make sure your hand is flat, and start at the breadboard end past your boards. Shift your weight so that in one pass, your arm can smoothly go from one side to the other. Shift up the breadboard end, come back down the next board to the next breadboard end. Back up to the next board, back up to the next board. And you just do this, nice and smooth, straight line, straight across, straight up, straight across, straight up, straight across, straight up, straight across, as far as you can reach without touching the table, stop at the other breadboard end. Come around to the other side. Starting at that same breadboard end, shift your weight, go across, down, go across, down. Straight across with your grain, straight up your breadboard end, straight across your grain. Keep doing that. You see how I'm shifting my weight back and forth? It's not to be stupid for the video, it is because it literally helps me keep the same amount of pressure on my hand and keep it moving that way it doesn't stutter and leave any marks. The whole point of doing this is we're trying to avoid having marks, having brush marks and whatnot. The last thing you want to do, clean up your two sides just in case you've got any drips. Touch the ends of your breadboard ends. Also cleaning up any drips and just adding a touch more polyurethane into those thirsty, thirsty end grains. And now you can see the table's nice and clear across these boards, but the breadboard ends now have globs of polyurethane on them. So same thing. Start right here, get the edge of that paper towel right to the edge of that line, and cut straight across, shifting your weight, stepping if you need to, boom, nice and clean. If you need to, come back and touch this corner, always going with the direction of the grain. So now we've got the first coat on, I'm going to go ahead and let this dry. Now one of the advantages to this is that it actually does dry a lot faster than brushed on polyurethane. Um, so this will only take a couple of hours to dry and I'm going to put a fan on it. So the advantage is I don't have to wait overnight or 24 hours. I can actually just go ahead and put a coat on it and come back and do another coat later. So we're going to let this dry and get the next coat on it here in a couple hours. So when doing a full size table, it's going to be the exact same thing. So I'm going to follow the wood grain for my center boards going all the way up and down in nice straight lines staying with the grain. And then I'm going to finish off with the breadboard ends, again following the wood grain but trying not to cross into the center boards and keeping those lines nice and clean. So that's it guys, that's my process, that's all I do for my dining tables and my pieces. I thin that polyurethane, I use my method to get it on, uh, following the wood grain and doing a little dance, and it actually works out really, really well. Now the cool thing about doing this process is that by filming the polyurethane on by hand, you one, eliminate brush strokes, two, you'll never have that real thick, nasty plastic look, but three, these coats go on so thin that not only do they dry faster and you can put on up to three coats per day with a light sanding in between, but also you wind up with a much, much more durable finish that looks so much nicer than brushing it on. If you do it right, you can actually come out and do one coat in the morning, sand it, one coat in the afternoon, sand it, one coat in the evening, and you can have three coats of polyurethane on in one day versus maybe one if you're lucky when you brush it on. 
So thanks for watching guys. Like I said, I've had a lot of requests for this specific video. A lot of people want to know how I get my finish on my tables. And like I said, that's it. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe for more of this awesomeness and turn on those notifications. Ding that little bell down there so that you'll know when I put new videos just like this up so that you can improve your woodworking. Until then guys, check out some of the other videos that are going to be here in my playlist in just a minute. And please help out support my channel by clicking some of the links below when you see those things in my videos. If you need supplies, click through one of my Amazon links. That's going to help support me making these awesome videos for you. So thanks again for watching guys, we'll see you next time.